Tell me something, boy. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the best original jams written to be sung by characters in movies. No, if I could, I'd do anything for you. Please don't ignore me, cause you know I adore you. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 20, Nobody Like You, Turning Red. <laughs> Billie Eilish and Phineas O'Connell. It seems like the pair can do anything, including writing a catchy song for a fake boy band in a Pixar movie. I'm never gonna let you cry, oh cry, don't cry. I'll never not be your ride or die. All right! One of the major set pieces of Turning Red is a concert for the boy band Four Town. While the credit for their big hit song, Nobody Like You, goes to them in the movie, it can be credited to Eilish and O'Connell IRL. Boy band music, although made specifically to have commercial appeal, also has a relatively distinct sound. This song from Four Town has the beat, the lyrics, and the vibe that could easily pass for something we'd hear on the radio today. I never met nobody like you. Had friends or not had buddy. It's true. Number 19. Breathe, Her Smell. Faking punk rock seems like an impossible task, but the movie Her Smell does a pretty good job of it. I think I'm on another world with you. With you. I'm on another planet with you. The plot centers on a punk band called Something She, headed up by lead singer Becky, who is played by Elizabeth Moss. One of the band's hit tracks is called Breathe, and it was written by Alicia Boniano who co-wrote the movie's music with Keegan DeWitt. Bonanno brings authenticity to the song's vibe, giving it a healthy dose of pop punk mixed with grunge. Even outside of the context of her smell, Breathe is a straight-up banger. Number 18, Mad About Me, the Cantina song. Star Wars Episode 4, A New Hope. When you're working with the likes of John Williams, it's best to remember that the king doesn't miss. The first Star Wars film is remembered for a lot of things, not the least of which is its signature Williams score. The Cantina song might not be the first melody you think about, but maybe it should be. When Luke Skywalker first walks into the alien cantina, he's greeted by a bar band playing a delightfully jaunty tune. The music feels old-timey but slightly off-putting. Alien, even, one might say. <laughs> that eccentricity aside, it's delightful to see these extraterrestrial beings going ham on instruments like this. Number 17, Grow Old With You, The Wedding Singer. Sometimes you just need a little help from your famous friends. My lie guy is Glenn. They're on this plane. No way! You guys gotta help me. Right! Yeah! Robbie and Julia first meet while separately preparing for their own weddings, but soon realize that they're with the wrong people. In the film's final act, Julia boards a plane to get married, unaware that Robbie shares her feelings. Instead of the traditional race to the airport confession, the wedding singer opts for a more musical display of romance, with the help of fellow first-class passenger Billy Idol. I'll get you medicine when your tummy aches Build you a fire if the furnace breaks so Robbie's impromptu song has a down-to-earth charm that perfectly matches his relationship with Julia, and even makes the plane's other passengers swoon. By the time he's finished, Glenn doesn't have a chance. I could be the man who grows old with you. Number 16, Supernova Girl, Xenon, Girl of the 21st Century. Zoom, 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 make my heart go boom, boom, boom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Make my heart go. 
If you started singing along, then you are definitely a 90s Disney Channel kid. Xenon, Girl of the 21st Century, is a favorite of the Disney Channel original movie canon, and features a song that is as catchy as it is fun. Breathing in, you give me air. I'm living off your solar flare. Could you be my supernova girl? In the movie, Supernova Girl is performed by pop star Protozoa and his band Microbe. The song feels appropriately galactic, but with a pop beat that even humans can get down to. It was written by Kristen Rex, who also composed music for the beloved television show Smart Guy. Number 15, Husevik, Eurovision Song Contest, The Story of Fire Saga. Even for a movie as silly as this one, the moment around this song is surprisingly heartfelt. We'll be disqualified. Just sing. This 2020 film stars Will Ferrell as Lars, a man who desperately wishes to win the Eurovision Song Contest. His love interest Secret is played by Rachel McAdams, and the culminating moment comes at the end when Lars switches out the song they were supposed to perform. Secret sings Husevik, a song she wrote for Lars about their hometown. Where the mountains sing through the screams of seagulls, where the whales can live, cause the gentle people in my hometown. There's a lot that happens in this movie, including an incident with a hamster wheel, but this moment rings beautifully true emotionally. More than that, it sounds like a real Eurovision song. Number 14, Pop Goes My Heart, Music and Lyrics. A romantic comedy about two songwriters? You better hope you have some actually good songs. Music and lyrics does that pretty well, but there's one song that stands above the rest. Something in the way you move, I can't deny. Every word from your lips is a lullaby. Pop Goes My Heart is one of the songs that Hugh Grant's character Alex Fletcher performed as a pop idol in the 1980s. And oh boy, does it fit the mold. Pop Goes My Heart sounds like the quintessential 80s pop hit. I said I wasn't gonna lose my head. Like the very best parodies, there's an enormous amount of love for the genre folded into the joke, but that only makes it even more enjoyable. Number 13, Falling Slowly, Once. When you write a song that sticks with people the way that Falling Slowly has, that really counts for something. I don't know you, but I want you all the more for that. Once is a 2007 musical indie film that became a huge hit, and the music plays a large part in that. Glenn Hansard and Marketa Irglova star as Guy and Girl, two musicians who meet and fall in love in Dublin. Yeah, we go to London, and no one will ever find us again. No one. No one. We'll have a brilliant band. We'll sell out those places, and it'll be great. Hansard and Irglova also helped write the songs for the film, including Falling Slowly. This beautiful piano ballad won an Oscar for Best Original Song and continues to break hearts today. Falling slowly, eyes that know me, and I can't go back. Number 12, Christmas is all around, Love Actually. When it comes to washed up rock stars, there's not one we love more than Billy Mac. Fighting for the Christmas number one, How's it looking so far? Very bad indeed. Blue are outselling me five to one, but I'm hoping for a late surge. As played by the incomparable Bill Nye in the 2003 Christmas classic Love Actually, Billy Mac is one of the best parts of the film. In particular, his new festive hit Christmas is All Around is absolutely perfect. Christmas is all around me, all around me. and so the feeling grows. The song is a holiday-themed version of a song by Trogs called Love Is All Around. No offense to Trogs, but we have to say we love the Billy Mac version better. So if you really love Christmas, love Christmas. come on, let it snow. The song is supposed to be kind of bad on purpose, but honestly, that's what makes it work. 
Get that tune to the top of the charts. Number 11, School of Rock, School of Rock. Now let's get out there and melt some faces! Yeah! Go get ready. Richard Linklater has made some of our favorite movies over the past few decades, but one of his most entertaining has got to be School of Rock. Jack Black absolutely shines as a wannabe musician who takes a job as a substitute and ends up teaching his classroom of kids how to jam out. The best part of the film comes at the very end when the class plays the song School of Rock at the Battle of the Bands. The film is filled with great classic rock tunes, but in all honesty, this track is one of the most fun in the entire movie. Black sings it wonderfully, and the kids are all so talented, it's almost tough to suspend our disbelief. Number 10, That Thing You Do, That Thing You Do. When it comes to fictional one-hit wonders, you can't get much better than this. That Thing You Do is a 1996 movie directed by and starring Tom Hanks, and follows the rise and fall of a pop band and their biggest song. The song, which shares a name with the movie, was written by Adam Schlesinger, the bassist from the band Fountains of Wayne. You can really tell the guy who had a hand in writing Stacy's Mom was involved because That Thing You Do is one of the best fake movie tunes of all time. Seriously, if the Wonders ever decide they want to get back together, we will be first in line to buy tickets. Number 9, Scotty Doesn't Know, Eurotrip. This vulgar hit from Eurotrip has the distinction of being one of the few fictional songs to have surpassed the popularity of its source. Scotty doesn't know that Fiona and me do it in my van every Sunday. While the 2004 comedy struggled to match its budget at the box office, Scotty Doesn't Know earned its band Lustra a spot on the Billboard Hot 100. Eurotrip seemed to predict the song's mass appeal IRL, as it's shown to be popular in the world of the film as well. In it, the song becomes a global sensation, even being remixed and sold as a ringtone. Naturally, there's one person who doesn't appreciate the tune's popularity, and that's Scotty. Number 8, Standout, a goofy movie. We can assume from his popularity that Powerline has many hit songs in the world of a goofy movie. But this is the one that Max, Goofy's son, chooses to perform for his school, and we think he picked right. Some people settle for the typical thing, living all their lives waiting in the wings. Standout, as its name implies, is about standing out from the crowd and making a name for yourself. Max definitely does just that when he and his friend PJ hijack their school's assembly for an impromptu performance. If I can make you stop and take a look at me instead of just He even catches the eye of his crush Roxanne. At the end of the movie, Max and Goofy get to jam out to eye to eye on stage with Powerline himself. But we'll always have a soft spot for this energizing anthem about making it big. Number 7, Drive It Like You Stole It, Sing Street. Anyone who's ever been in a band will tell you how difficult it is to make a name for yourself, especially in high school. In that respect, the teens in Sing Street are living the dream. In this 80s set film, the titular band writes and performs a number of catchy tunes inspired by the music of the era, slowly rising in popularity. Our favorite of these songs is Drive It Like You Stole It, an empowering rock pop number the boys sing at their school's senior prom. The song's lyrics perfectly encapsulate the protagonist's character arc, while the performance allows him and his bandmates to show off their renewed self-confidence in front of their peers. It's truly a joy to watch. Number 6, 
drive it like you stole it. Number six, Fever Dog, Almost Famous. We're here because of the music. We are Band-Aids. At the end of the day, Almost Famous is more about William Miller and the colorful array of groupies he meets than it is about a band. Nonetheless, the band at the center of it all is an undeniably important aspect of the film. And it's equally important that their songs are good enough to warrant their dedicated fan base. Fever Dog proves that they have what it takes to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with other 70s rock musicians. The song takes inspiration from the real rock bands featured alongside it on the film's Grammy Award-winning soundtrack, and boasts some shockingly impressive vocals from actor Jason Lee. Number 5. We Are Sex bob Scott Pilgrim vs. The World We know what you're thinking, and we agree. Black Sheep is great. Hello again. Unfortunately, that show-stopping The Clash at Demon Head performance is technically a cover. And honestly, it's about time Sex bob got some appreciation too. Although its members fear their music sucks, their introductory song We Are Sex bob proves the opposite. It's just the right energy to introduce the film's insane ensemble cast. They follow it up with a performance of Garbage Truck in the first round of Battle of the Bands, which is lyrically abrasive but a ton of fun. Take your town. Show you the sights you know you want to ride. Oh my god, it's truck. Both songs strike the perfect balance between good and garage band. It's just a shame that Garbage Truck has to be interrupted by Ramona's first evil ex. Number 4. Equal Rights, Not Gay Pop Star, Never Stop, Never Stopping When Macklemore and Ryan Lewis released Same Love, it was met with a mixed response. While many applauded the song for its message, some poked fun at its cornier lyrics. Strip away the fear, underneath it's all the same love, about time that we raised up. I can't Sex. The Lonely Island's mockumentary film Pop Star, Never Stop, Never Stopping takes this a step further. In it, Connor For Real sings a song entitled Equal Rights, in which he advocates for gay rights while continuously insisting that he is straight. We need equality and for all to see that this is the new way and not to gay. It just seems not gay, wrong, not gay, that no one seems to care sports. He even randomly shouts out stereotypical straight male interests like sports, four-wheel drive, and golf clubs to hammer home the point. It's a hilarious play on the overzealous straight savior type that has emerged in modern pop culture. And with a chorus sung by Pink, it's an unironic jam. I was born this way. Straight. You were born your way. Gay. Gay is straight, straight or gay is all okay. Sure. Number three, What Dreams Are Made Of, the Lizzie McGuire movie. When Lizzie graduated from junior high, she never expected to have a run-in with a pop star whose former partner looked exactly like her. And yet that's exactly what happened. Throughout her school-sponsored trip to Rome, Lizzie secretly meets with Paolo, who teaches her how to be a star. He turns out to be a lip-syncing liar, but his former partner Isabella arrives at just the right time to save the day. She and Lizzie sing what dreams are made of on an international stage, impressing Lizzie's parents and classmates, and absolutely blowing our eight-year-old selves minds. When I see you smiling, I go, oh, oh, oh. Ironically, as Isabella, Hilary Duff is actually lip-syncing the voice of her sister Haley. The different voice gives credence to the idea that these are two separate people, not just a brunette Lizzie. Hey now. Number 2. Pretend to be nice, Josie and the Pussycats Josie and the Pussycats is the best fake band ever, and we promise we weren't brainwashed into saying that. This is the best CD ever! Yeah, that was Gatorade. While their meteoric rise to fame could be attributed to their shady record label, we'd like to think that Pretend to be Nice would have risen through the pop charts regardless of any outside intervention. The tune is super fun and a total earworm, with lyrics relatable to anyone who's ever had a careless, inattentive partner. In 
addition to this chart topper, Josie and the Pussycats also perform the equally enjoyable spin around at a global concert that acts as the film's finale. But not before getting some much needed assistance from their predecessor DuJour, whose song Backdoor Lover was all the rage before their mysterious plane crash. Lying on your bed staring up at the moon. You got me crazy, gotta love you soon. I'm your before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Shallow – A Star Is Born Shallow may be a fake song, but there's no denying Lady Gaga's very real talent. A Star Is Born is the third remake of a 1937 film of the same name, but more than sets itself apart with its moving performances and modern take on the music industry. On an in-world episode of Saturday Night Live, Gaga's character Allie performs the catchy Why Did You Do That? It's not bad, but it's a far cry from Allie's authentic self, which is best showcased in her performance of Shallow with Jack. The song is a powerful reflection on the dangers of stardom, just as relevant to our real world as it is the fictional world of Allie and Jack. If we missed any of your favorite original movie tunes, let us know in the comments below. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments! And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here!